call me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Fat Man. What up? Welcome back once again to the Necro Zoo. I am Bones. And in this one, let's go ahead and add one more figure to my McFarlane DC Multiverse collection. Now today we will take our first look at the McFarlane Collector Series line. Now first off, let's get it out of the way. Everybody knows that <laughs> these were not really what we were expecting, but I actually told everybody a while back not to get your hopes up that we would not know exactly what these figures were going to be about or what the sets were going to be about until they were released. Now, in my opinion, from the beginning, even when we just saw the promo shots of these figures, I was hoping and praying that McFarlane would get it through his head that what we wanted was a figure, alternate hands, two accessories, and maybe just maybe like a piece of diorama or something where you could display the figure on. Now that was what I wanted, but we didn't know exactly for sure what these were gonna be. Now, <laughs> now when we finally did see them, we saw that these come with minimal accessories, especially this one. I think the Alan Scott comes with the most, which is an effect and his lantern, but no alternate hands. And I think for me, just the alternate hands were going to be a big push for the collectors to want to pick these up. Of course, Abyss also came with nothing except for two weapons. So I think McFarlane basically wanted to make this more of a collector's edition in packaging and the display aspects of this where that's not what collectors want <laughs> collectors want a little bit more playability and ways to pose the figure and different display options that's what collectors want not any packaging or extra little flair that nobody cares about they really care about the meat and potatoes which is the figure and the accessories luckily we did begin to hear rumors at San Diego Comic-Con that McFarlane has already caught wind of this. But since then, we have actually heard even more rumors that the future Collector Edition releases will be coming with more accessories, hands, effects. So honestly, until we see Wave 2, we will not know if this is for sure or not. But for me, I will pick up the first one, you know, just to review it. But everything, depending on if I really like the figure or I have, if I have any custom options that if I'll pick up any more. And then we shall see if they even actually go down in price, where that is usually where I pick up my extra figures. But I do have my unopened mint inbox collection to think of, so I will eventually pick up at least one more of these figures. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. He does look pretty vintage in the packaging, but let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. But first, he does come with your standard black DC Multiverse stand, except that this one has a little bit of silver paint on the DC logo. So I will not be throwing this on my pile of other stands. I will actually hold on to this one separately he comes with his data file card now once again they went with an alternate version of the data file card adding a little bit of silver kind of foil printing on the front you do have an image of the comics from the 1938 action comics number one pretty iconic image now there has been a lot of rumblings about this is not the version of the figure that we received but if you look actually inside the comic, his costume design is more of this release. But there is a platinum version that kind of does the color scheme and costume design of the one that's on the cover of Action Comics. So good luck trying to find that one. Hopefully I come across one for not too expensive or maybe even in the wild. I have heard that sometimes you order them and they ship you the platinum just, you know, by dumb luck. But in the end, this makes it that it's not a big priority for me. If I get one cool, I don't end up picking one up. No biggie. 
on the back you do have some information. Now the card is a little bit nicer, but this is what I mean where McFarlane could have taken the money he used to print these nicer cards and we would really not, not care and we would rather have extra hands. So we'll hold on to that. Now you do get a stand to hold your card in and display your card in. Now we have seen this before, like with King Shark and the Jokerized versions. They all come with this basic stand, just different colors. Now, once again, I, I think McFarlane has in his mind that when we display this figure, or it is true that if you don't really collect a lot of McFarlane, but you want like this golden era Superman to display in your office or, you know, to, to make a nice little lit up cubby where you could display him, or maybe you want to display him next to an Action Comics number one that you have. This is what McFarlane imagines in, in his mind that, he, that people are going to display this, but not necessarily true. Not everybody has space to display each and every figure, especially the hardcore collectors. Not just your random guy that's going to want this for his desk. So this is another thing that we did not really need. And I think hopefully McFarlane has heard this from the fans. So we'll still hold on to that. Now, surprisingly, it also comes with your McFarlane flight stand. The only difference is that it has black printing on the DC logo. So this one will also be kept separated from the other hundred that I have. Now, I don't really use these flight stands. To me, the way I display my figures, there's not really any room for me to display with flight stands. Now, Sometimes I may use them depending if I'm going to make a little display or take photos or something like that. But these are another thing that we did not really need. Although, I would have rather had this flight stand and not the black stand because as we know, McFarlane kind of randomly picks which characters get a flight stand. Um, as we know, the Batwing didn't get a flight stand and he's a flying character. And then the Supergirl from the Flash movie got a flight stand, and who really cares? But there is one thing I would like to stress, and that is that this version of Superman did not actually fly in the way that we think about it today. This version of Superman actually just jumped like long distances. It's in that whole thing about faster than a speeding bullet able to leap tall buildings in a single bound and that was because in the original run of the comics he never actually flew he had to like build his powers up to that so we'll still hold on to this so it was a nice gesture from McFarlane but hopefully now they understand what we actually want as collectors now he does come with <laughs> one accessory which is actually pretty cool that is some chains now, Superman goes back in time, breaking chains throughout all DC Comics lore. Through each era, you could find him breaking chains. Now, these are actually pretty nice. They have a nice sort of dark iron paint to them. And you could wrap these around him and take photos. It look, actually looks really cool. And another thing is that they actually have some snaps. Where if you snap these on, like this you can actually make it look like Superman is actually tied around in the chains and then when you feel like breaking them you can actually break them so I thought that was a nice little touch now this part of Superman's lore goes back to where he is from he's actually from the early 40s the late uh, 30s where People thought of strong men as like the strong, <laughs> the strongest guys on the planet. And these guys were a lot of, you know, mixed in with like carnivals and carny work and circuses and stuff like that. And they had a whole image that they used to sell these strong men, which was breaking chains, bending bars, you know, feats of strength that a normal average weakling will not be able to do so people were in awe of these guys and that is basically where the first ideas of superman came from so he's more like of an era where strong men played a large part in the whole the whole aura of superman and his legacy till you come till nowadays where 
he flies around. He has like super super powers where he could like <laughs> destroy buildings and all of that. So we've come a long way. But this, I thought this was a nice little touch. Just if they would have added the hands, I don't. I think this would would not be such a big issue. But pretty cool. We'll go ahead and add this to the accessory collection. Now let's go ahead and take a more detailed look at the figure. Now. I'm not going to go through a lot of articulation because, of course, this is the Infected Superman book. And once again, everybody knows that everybody doesn't want to see this book anymore. I remember when people were so in love with it and were asking for a regular Superman with the infected body. And then they got it and all of a sudden <laughs> it just became a big deal. Now, trust me, I understand that... People look at McFarlane at the line and they see all of the original sculpt, a lot of cool detail work, and they wonder if he could make so many different versions of Batman or make alternate figures that are never going to be made again, like Ghostmaker, why can't he at least make a couple of different bodies of Superman? That way you could have different choices and use different body types for the character that it's supposed to portray. Like, just to start off with this one, it should not have any design lines in the costume. It should just be a regular spandex costume. And in all honesty, strongmen were not completely ripped with chiseled abs. They were a little bit more bulky and not so much of a lean physique. Now, for me, this kind of works because just by the light blue of the costume and the different head sculpt, it actually kind of takes me to that era, the, you know, the barrel chest, the big arms. But there are just little details that collectors, if you want to do a collector line, you have to be conscious of the fact that collectors have a sharp eye. And they, and they will notice every little detail from a button to a curl in the hair. If it's wrong, the collectors are going to come after you in the comments. So... First impressions, I like this figure. The head sculpt is a completely different head sculpt that takes you into a different era of superheroes. But if I were to have done it, I would have done it a completely different way. Now, I said I wouldn't look into articulation as much. So we'll go ahead and start off and look at the head sculpt. I actually like this head sculpt. Once again, I do think that the head kind of sits a little bit low which makes the traps actually stick out a lot more and they should look a little bit less obvious and if you raise up the head you will get that softening of the musculature of the traps which we'll do later on in the video but I do like the head sculpt like I said it gives you a throwback to the old costume heroes of the golden era Really love that light, light blue color. It sets them apart from all the other Superman. And if you go down, of course, you have the old school emblem. Now, this is painted on. It is not something that we've come to expect from McFarlane is sculpted out details. Now, that would make a big difference if you were to sculpt this out and have like a little hole right in the chest. That way you could swap out emblems with like no big deal just pop it in and out by using a little porthole in the chest and you could put a bat symbol you could put a green lantern symbol you could put a superman symbol without having to change a lot of the original book but they did go with the painted on version here which is fine you still get what you want in the look of the costume but i just missed that really cool sculpted detail that mcfarland is known for now as i said you have the same articulation in the shoulders pretty nice and smooth bicep swivel the same you got articulation in the wrist now they have come a long way where they changed the ball where it's not so big and then now it's kind of small so, so it doesn't stick out so much but you still get your articulation now another <laughs> now that's another thing where they messed up is they gave him no alternate hands you really want to have this guy with two fists and they just gave him another like kind of open grasping sort of hand. 
which, like I said, it's not a big deal, but for a collector line, it is a big deal. Now, if you have any of the newer Superman, like the two-pack of Ultraman, you can pop this hand off and actually switch out the hands. Now, I have a flight hand here. Now, this hand is actually from the Doomsday Superman two-pack, but it does work with him if you were to get him in a flight pose or just want an alternate option for hands. As I said before, <laughs> this guy isn't supposed to be flying in the traditional sense, but it's always nice to have that option with an open hand. But me, I would actually prefer going with another fist. Snaps right on there. That is from the Ultraman 2-pack. And, you know, put aside the skin tone part of it. That can always be fixed. But he just feels a lot better with two fists. Just for the era they're going for here with the strongman and the breaking of chains. Two fists would have been a better option. Now going down to the legs, you get more of those paneling lines that should not be there in an old traditional costume. The, the lower legs are actually from the same infected body. You see the outline of the boots and they just painted them blue. Now come on McFarlane, I know that you do have a clean sculpt where you would just have to pop out the pins and tell everybody, we're not using the same lower legs here. We're using the lower legs from Ultraman or, or whatever, something like that, to where you could make different figures from the tools you already have in your tool belt. I just don't get it. That's why I always say that McFarlane <laughs> really needs a consultant that knows, that has their thumb on the pulse of what the collectors want and what is actual true to the comics. Now, thigh swivel is minimal here and that is because it is straight out of the package. If you were to heat this up, you could probably loosen it a little bit more and get a lot more swivel to move that boot from side to side. Trunks move out of the way for articulation. Nice tight joints, you could, you could actually hear that. Uh, it's all the same. Basically, we're just looking at this new version of Superman. Now, as I said, you can get the chains and put them around him, do some cool photography. It's an awesome little accessory that works really well. You could swap out the hands. And for an idea of scale, we're going to have to go with the original Rebirth Superman. Now, the reason I bring this guy out first is because I would have liked McFarlane to use this cape just because it's not so dynamic as the one that he uses. Now, I've messed around with this one for a while. I use the chains on him, and it doesn't get in the way or it's not too cumbersome, but I just think for the simple old design where Superman's cape was not like this big flowing cape, it was just a little tight cape, this cape would have worked perfectly for this version of Superman. Now, if you put these two together, you'll see that they are basically the same size. I have never done the thigh lift to this Rebirth Superman. The neck peg is the same, so he's going to be a smaller Superman, which is the same as this one here with the Collector's Edition. Now, another one I want to bring out is actually the newer Rebirth from the two-pack of Ultraman, which actually I've been having a lot of fun with this goofy guy. I did raise his head. So if you put him, and I did the thigh lift on him, so if you put him next to this Superman, he's substantially taller. You know, it, it makes a big difference, just those little millimeters to how the figure actually looks aesthetically and through proportions. But now that I did those changes to this Superman, he's become one of my favorite Supermans to pose and have fun with. So we're going to go ahead and take this Superman First thing, thing, if you pop off the head, you'll take out the peg and you'll see that it's a shorter peg. Now I do have alternate pegs from a lot of the custom work that I've done. And this purple one is actually a little bit taller than the one he comes with. So I do switch those out 
and right away you get a completely different feel for the character his head isn't so squished down on his neck it lightens up the jawline a little bit and doesn't make it so round and bulky and streamlines it a little bit and gives you a, just a nicer more aesthetic head now this actually adds to the articulation you could look down even more and you could actually look up even better which will work for putting them in different poses so that's a benefit from extending up that peg now if you do not have an extra peg there is also a way to extend the peg that he comes with but it's a longer process you have to cut it in half and drill two holes on either side and that will actually raise the peg enough to make a difference but luckily i had that alternate peg and i really like the way he looks now with that lifted up head now we'll go ahead and do the thigh lift to the legs which we've done before you just heat it up in hot water and pop out the plug that goes into the top of the thigh and instead of pushing it all the way back in when you reinstall it you actually leave it lifted uh, almost like a quarter inch i think it is or a little bit less than a quarter inch which actually gives him a little bit of height and with the neck peg mod and the thigh mod it actually lifts him up a little bit bigger but he keeps the same lines there's no breakup of the of the way the figure actually looks but now when you put him next to the rebirth he's actually a little bit taller than the rebirth figure so that's what you want you want to lift them up a little bit not to where you could tell but to where it gives them just that little bit of height so he works a lot better now another thing I wanted to do was just see some options in head scopes we will go ahead and take a look at this body but with the rebirth head sculpt now this is your classic Superman look but it does not match up with a golden era it matches up more like the 90s sort of 80s look of Superman then I also wanted to try the doomsday two-pack head which is actually the hush head now he does look a little bit angry and <laughs> has a little bit of blood splatter on him but i wanted to use him to show how like an angry portrait which is another thing these collector's edition didn't come with was any alternate heads which is another option even though that'll kill me because then i'll have to buy two so that i could display both heads but that's a whole another story but if you want to show him breaking the chains and have a little bit of motion in the face, you can use an alternate head such as this. It actually works pretty well and looks good on the body. That's the hush one. And then also let's try this rebirth <laughs> creepy head uh, just to see how it looks. Now, this one kind of changes it up and makes me feel like of a more patriotic Superman for some reason. Like back in the day, you know, during the wartime era you had a lot of pro-america and superman was involved in that and it just gives you that feel where this freaky head of the ultraman two-pack just works well with this body so those are just some options you can decide what you want to do for your own figure i'm actually on the notion that i'm happy with this figure now i'm not happy with the price and i'm not happy with the accessories just as everybody else is not happy but hopefully with the second wave of these collector's edition we do get more accessories and less little flair that nobody really wants or cares about but now he is gonna look awesome up there on my shelf with the rest of the superman but you guys keep hunting out there keep collecting keep customizing and i will see you on the next one Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman.